Well, hello, my lovelies. It's Murky Meg here. It's Thursday, the 2nd of December, and unfortunately, the court has ruled on side of Meghan Markle. Now, Associated Newspapers appealed the summary judgment, and they were trying to overturn the decision made by the High Court judge earlier this year not to go to a trial. It basically found that they didn't need to go to a trial on the evidence that was provided. This appeal was to try and overturn the, that judgment to try and take this to a trial. Obviously, it's failed and the summary judgment now still stands, so there won't ever be a trial in this. Now, I've done several videos on this and I have put links up in the right-hand corners that will take you directly to those videos that I made. But basically, they said that the facts that were given in the summary judgment hearing weren't to the full facts of the knowledge that they had and that they said that they had evidence to suggest that Meghan Markle knew that the letter was going to be read by the public. In fact, that she wrote with this in mind that the public would view the letter so it kind of argued that her privacy was going to be breached anyway um, and we also found out that she lied to the court when she originally said that she had no knowledge or didn't cooperate with the authors of Finding Freedom and in fact it turns out that she did and she had to apologise to the court and said that she had forgotten and of course this amazing front page newspaper came out in mocking her, quite rightfully so. Unfortunately that means Jack because the decision has been held and the appeal has not been granted. Today, the Court of Appeal said that it's hard to see what evidence could have been added at the trial that would have altered the situation. Now, Megan, of course, in only the style that Megan can, said this is a victory not just for me, but for anyone who has ever felt scared to stand up for what's right. While this win is precedent setting, what matters most is we are now collectively brave enough to reshape a tabloid industry that conditions people to be cruel and profits from the lies and pain that they create. Did she just mention lies? Oh, she's a fine one to talk, isn't she? I can't, I, I can't actually believe that in her statement she mentions lies when it, she's been found out to have lied to court. The audacity of this woman. She went on and added from the statement that from day one she had treated the lawsuit as important message of right versus wrong. The defendant, i.e. the Mail on Sunday, she claims treated it as a game with no rules. She went on, the longer they dragged it out, the more they could twist facts and manipulate the public, even during the appeal itself, making a straightforward case extraordinarily convoluted in order to generate more headlines and sell more newspapers, a model that rewards chaos over truth. In the nearly three years since this began, I have been patient in the face of deception, intimidation and calculated attacks. She continued that, as far removed as it may seem from your personal life, it's not. Tomorrow it could be you. Those harmful practices don't happen once in a blue moon. They are a daily fail that divides us and we all deserve better. So the court has upheld the decision of the judgment summary and said that the decision is that the Duchess had a reasonable expectation of privacy in the contents of this letter. The court then continued, these contents were personal, private and not matters of legitimate public interest. The articles in the mail on Sunday interfered with the Duchess's reasonable expectation of privacy. But what I don't get is that she didn't have an expectation of privacy because she knew the letters were going to be made public. She wrote it with the public in mind to pull at their heartstrings. I cannot believe this decision. Referring to the decision made early in the year, the court said the judge had been in as good a position as any trial judge to look at the article in People magazine, the letter and the Mail on Sunday articles to decide if publication of the contents of the letter was appropriate to rebut the allegations against Mr. Markle. The judge had correctly decided that whilst it may have been proportionate to publish a very small part of the letter for that purpose, it was not necessary to publish half the contents of the letter as Associated Newspapers had done. So that's basically saying that 
Had the Mail on Sunday only published a small part of the letter and not half of the letter, this decision would have been very different. Now, as I said earlier, that last month the court was told that Meghan had written the letter with public consumption in mind as a possibility. And we all know that Jason Knaff, who was Harry and Meghan's media advisor up until March 2019, said that Meghan indicated in messages to me, he said that she recognised that it was possible that Mr Markle, i.e. Thomas Markle, would make the letter public. So she wrote that letter with the public in mind. And the Mail on Sunday were arguing that, well, if she knew that, why on earth would you write this letter? Why not pick up the phone? But what I don't get out of all of this is that she admitted she lied. She changed her statement several times before that anyway, but she admitted that she forgot that she cooperated with the authors of Finding Freedom. How is that allowed? If she is protecting her privacy, why is she even contemplating, or why did she even contemplate working with Omid Scooby, be it by proxy? She knew what she was doing. It just blows privacy out the water, doesn't it? It's making a mockery of the system. And I firmly believe now when I read this news, I instantly thought, well, the royal family stepped in, haven't they? Because ultimately, if this had gone to trial, we would have seen lots of people being called in for witnesses. Possibly William, Prince William himself. But definitely Meghan Markle would have gone into the court. Prince Harry would have. Jason Naff. Um, Samantha Cohen, one of the aides. A load of the aides would have been dragged in to become witnesses in the trial. And you really think Buckingham Palace would want that? No, they've stepped in. I'm a firm believer, this is my honest opinion, Buckingham Palace has pulled the plug and they've said this will not go to trial. I don't think we'll ever find out the truth. But in what world is it okay to say, well, I wrote the letter with the public in mind to pull at the heartstrings, but oh, and I lied as well when I said I didn't cooperate with the authors of a hagiography finding feed him all about how wonderful my life is and how terrible the royal family is. But I forgot that I cooperated with them. Oh, silly me. Sorry. That's perjury. Yeah, everything's fine. And she wins yet again. It's not right, is it? It's not right. I feel like something, this seismic shift has suddenly gone on in my brain. And everything is tipped and skewed. Do you think the royal family pulled the plug and said this mustn't go to trial? Because I do. She lied to the court and misled the court itself. In what world does this still stand? Is How is that allowed? Now, some would say, playing devil's advocate, well, she didn't really perjure herself because the trial wasn't about the book, it was about the letter. But it's about her character and being able to literally lie and say, no, sorry, I didn't have anything to do with that book, when in fact, when evidence turns around and said, actually, you did. She went, oh, yes, yeah, sorry, I forgot about that. It's about moral character. It's also about the implication of privacy. She expects a letter to remain private, but is okay to discuss private things about her and others within the royal family to the authors of Finding Freedom. And let's not forget about the bit where she discussed with Jason Naff that using daddy would be good for sympathy. It would pull on the heartstrings if I used the word daddy. And we can't forget the fact that Thomas Markle sat on this letter for six months and it wasn't until People magazine published from those five friends speaking up and referenced the letter did Thomas Markle then speak up and say, actually, this is what's happened. But, and I will still state, if the Daily Mail had only written a tiny part of that letter as an extract, we wouldn't be in this situation. The fact that they wrote or published half of the letter is why the appeal hasn't won. What do you think of her referencing the lies in her statement? I mean, that's ironic really, isn't it? That she mentions lies when she herself has in fact lied to the court. That's moronic really, isn't it? I honestly feel like I am peddling against a tide with all of this because it just seems like she wins at every single opportunity, doesn't it? But I truly believe that at some stage Buckingham Palace have stepped in and said, nah, this can't go to trial. Because they don't want it to go to trial at all. They wouldn't want any of this on trial. What's the betting that something has gone on and something was afoot? 
What I still don't get is that, you know, she wants a privacy and she sued the Mail on Sunday with regards to the letter. But it's absolutely fine and acceptable for them to go on a worldwide television or on Oprah and slate the royal family and call one of them racist. In what world is that okay? Now I'm going to be completely out there and I'm going to put my tin foil hat on. It doesn't often happen. I grant you that. I honestly think somebody or people have got some serious money backing Harry and Meghan. I honestly think her aim is for the White House. And I know you're going to shoot me down and say, no, that'll never happen. Stranger things have happened. And I know that you'll probably say, well, she needs a thicker skin for that. She can't cope with criticism. And I agree with you. Yes, 100%. But I think this will only stir on her ego to think that she is completely invincible. And I think she has some serious backers that are well aware of her ambitions and that will push her to try and get into the White House that is my theory and my prediction. Whether or not it happens, I don't know. But nothing is making sense right now. She lied in court, yet yeah, that's absolutely fine. They go on Oprah, absolutely slate their royal family and call them all the names under the sun and imply really horrible things about them. But again, there's no rebuttal. That's absolutely fine. Why? What's the bigger game plan here? And lo and behold, look at this, within hours of the court appeal still standing, it is reported that Meghan calls for tabloid industry overhaul as the Mail on Sunday loses its appeal. The Duchess of Sussex called for a reshaping of the tabloid industry and said that she had been patient in the face of deception, intimidation and calculated attacks. This is exactly what she wants. She wants to silence critics. It's plain and simple. She's okay to slander and to slate everybody else, but God forbid it ever happens to her. I'm going to end this video with one simple fact. It really doesn't matter that she won, because we all know that she lied. She lied to the court under the guise of, oh, I forgot, that she corroborated with Omid after four months of her wedding. And we also know that this letter was manipulatively written with the public in mind. That just shows the colour of her character, doesn't it? So I would love to know your thoughts on this. Are you shocked? Did you expect it? Do you think there's something more sinister going on behind the scenes? Do you think that the judge was right to upheld the summary judgment and for it not to go to trial? Do you think the royal family themselves stepped in and said, no, we can't go to court. What on earth do you think is going on? As always, I would love to know your thoughts. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit the notification bell, and also that like button. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of my followers for all the tips and all the emails, DMs that everybody sends to me, it really is greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for watching once again.